Hi, Danielle the Clay Lady here on the Clay Ladies campus in Nashville, Tennessee. This is the fourth short video in a series on how to throw on the potter's wheel one step at a time. We have covered centering, opening, defining the floor, and widening, and now we're going to pull up. Do you find that when you're making pots that everything kind of turns into a bowl? That's because this whole process wants to be a bowl. If you think about the uh, centripetal force of created by the wheel, that momentum that pulls the clay out, your body is leaning out, the way your hands are moving bends with, the, with your body that creates this outward motion. So when to try to pull up and make a cylinder is kind of contrary to this whole setup on working on the potter's wheel. But I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that make it really easy. So we have a nice foundation here to pull up. We have a good floor, we have a nice wall, and it's time for us to get some of this clay up into the wall to get it pulled up. We're going to hold our sponge like a frowny duck, like this, and then we're going to use our fingertips on the inside. I make sure my hands are wet. My wheel needs to be going about medium to medium slow. The rule for wheel speed is the thinner the walls, the slower the wheel. So although I might start off at medium on my first pull, as I continually pull to try to get the walls a good even thickness, I might slow my wheel down even more. So here we go. We're going to make a little frowny duck. We're going to go all the way to the bottom of my of my clay here and then my inside hand's going to go to the bottom on the inside. I'm going to tuck my elbows and rest my left thumb on my right hand. What that creates is a nice bracing so that all I have to think of is my right hand and my left hand will just follow it. So I'm not moving my left hand, I'm just thinking about my right hand. This also creates the perfect position in that my inside hand is a little higher than the pressure point of my outside hand. You want to make sure that your fingers don't end up doing this. You want your fingers to be completely opposite of each other with your inside hand a little bit higher. So this is what a pull looks like. I'm going to slowly move my hand upward, keeping in mind the spin of the wheel. I need the, the cylinder, the clay, to go all the way around before I slowly move my hand upward. Can you see how it's starting to kind of pull at the top? That's because my inside hand got dry. I always get water, go right back to where I was, hold there for a minute, and a good way to end a pull is to roll the outside hand over. This is uh, called compressing the rim. So I just roll that sponge over to the rim. That keeps the uh, rim from getting too sharp and also helps compress the clay. And this slip that's being created is not resting on top of the rim. So the goal of pulling up is not to make a thin wall. The goal of pulling up is to make a consistently thick wall. So I can look at the inside of my pot and I can see that my walls are going straight up and down, but out here my walls are going at an angle. So that gives me a clue on where my clay is that I'm trying to push up into my wall. Now, it's not really about pressure when you're pulling up. It's more about position. So really work on your position in that I'm going to have my outside hand all the way here and I'm going to hold it there for a minute until it creates a bit of a shelf. See that little shelf right there? That's where my inside hand is because this is the floor of my pot here. So my inside hand is not pushing outward but is also not letting my outside hand push inward and it's a nice pressure that's created from the position of my hands. I'm starting to jerk a little bit, so I'm going to get some water on my sponge and my hands. I'm going to go right back to where I was, and I'm going to slowly move up. Now, even though I am trying to pull up as straight as possible, can you see the shape, how it's starting to flare out? That's that bowl. So what we want to do is we want to contain the cylinder, so we're going to use just the sides of our hands and pull that rim back in. You don't want to use the whole flat of your hands because the, this part of your pot's actually traveling at a different velocity and then down here. There's, and if you put the whole flat of your hands, it will create an uneven pressure and you'll get a torque. I call it the hula because your pot will start dancing around. So you don't want to do the whole of your hands. Just do right little pressure points right along this line and you can slowly move up. So. My walls are still uh, a little uneven. They're still thick down here, making sure my hands are wet. It's getting a little difficult for me to reach in and brace myself. So what I can do is what I call the salute. And that's when I take my thumb, put it under my fingers, and I'm going to hold my hand way up high. See how my elbow's going up in the air? 
and then I can drop my hand into my pot and this creates a tension in my arm so that I have some good uh, bracing even though my left hand is not braced on my right anymore. I'm going to push down here. My inside hand is actually resting right on that little ridge right there so it even knows how to pull up with the movement of my right hand even though they're not connected. Now I'm going to slowly lower my elbow, put my thumb on top of my right hand because I'm able to reach and I'm going to move all the way to the top and roll over that rim. Now the goal again is not to make a thin wall because a thin wall, if you make a thin cylinder, there's no clay left in the wall for shaping. If I want to belly this out or if I want to flare the rim, I need some clay to do that. So, oops, I'm getting a little dry. I'm going to get some water and go right back to where I was. So we want to make sure that our walls are the consistent thickness, but that there's still a little bit of thickness. The clay lady rule is thick as an Oreo cookie, not a double stuff anymore, so that I have enough clay. Because if I have a wall that's thin, when I try to swell it out, it's going to get even thinner, and that's when you start having collapsed pots. But if I have clay that where I start bellying, bellying it out, I will be able to have enough clay. It'll thin as it goes out, but there's enough clay to make it substantial. There's one more thing that you want to do on the last pull, and that's what I call using the savings account. Because as much as we try to hold down here and pull up, there's always a little extra clay right here. So I want to make sure that the inside corner has not been pushed in. So maybe I want to push that corner back out, remind it where I want it to be, where I've defined the bottom with just a little pressure from the inside. And then this clay, I can gather that up and I can do one final pull up the cylinder, remembering that you have to marry the speed of your hands going up the side to the speed of your wheel. My wheel's going slow, so my fingers need to go slow as it goes up the side of the wall. And that gets every little last bit of clay up into your cylinder. Now there are some uh, instructors that teach to hold your hands like this to pull up. The only thing is if you hold your hands like this to pull up, you can only go so far. But if you have your hands like this, you can create a lot of height on the pot. So I think that covers pulling up. Pulling up is the practice step. It takes a lot of practice to make a nice tall cylinder. But just keep using your hands and pulling up the side. Even if it gets wobbly and uneven, cut that pot in half. Look and see where you're leaving the clay. And then the next time that you pull up, remember where you've left the clay so you can get that pulled up into the wall of your pot. That'll keep the bottom of your pot being nice and balanced and not heavy. So the next step would be shaping. Once you have a good cylinder with completely consistent walls, you'll be able to get some shape onto your pot. And that's going to be in our next video, shaping. Do you find that you are just creating the same thing over and over? Let's talk about the techniques so that you can vary the shape of your pot. So if you need some more information about the campus or about my products or my book, The Clay Lady Lesson Book for Potters, or just want to be on our newsletter, go to theclaylady.com. I so appreciate the teaching opportunity. Can hardly wait to teach you about shaping. And remember, be an artist in everything you do.